The talk of town is how worried everybody is on the economy of this country. So a conversation between two people, although they were making fun, but this is life, one of them said, my hairline is in, is in recession. And the other one said, my waistline is in inflation. And the other one said, I am in depression. The economy of this country. And I want to share about hope in the midst of pressure. If you met people and they are discuss discussing and that's what they are saying, all, all what they are trying to let you know is that they are trying to tell you that life is not as it was. And it is very interesting because even people that I know they are believers, right now as they struggle, I have a friend who has always kept comments to me. The last comment he made last this week was that, look at your government. Because he believes this is our government. First of all, it's good to have a government. So when people say it is your government, I think they are right. But what they are saying which is not right is that I run the government. I don't. But I've always asked, Sirikali ni nani kama siyo wewe? So when somebody says I think he's right. Now the problem is they are looking for some conversation. And some of us, there are fights that we never fight. A fight like who owns what, I won't fight. Because it will not add anything to me. And I think sometimes I get tired and bored. Because if I'm going to keep on talking about fuel, and it will never, you know, I have, I have told people that the flights incidentally, the flight of going to Europe or America, for a long time it has not changed. What has changed is our shilling. Because one time it was seven shillings to a dollar and I flew to Canada with 3,500 return. Say, God is good. But it will never get back to seven shillings per dollar. So I will not waste my time. I will keep on living. And that's why I said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because my tomorrow the dollar will be maybe 200 or 300 or 400. But I want to believe that God that sustained my forefathers who worked for no money, but they worked for posho. They were getting food every week to survive and to sustain themselves. And my show show would sing a wonderful song to those muzungu wana mothogo we ran order. If they survived then, even now I will. Because God does not change. Situations will change. Tomatoes, how much? Man, they are very expensive. But are we going to use them? Yes, we will. Occasionally, if, if you cannot put them in every mboga, then occasionally. Ama kama sivyo tuende pale kwa wahindi tunue karipoda. Do you know what a karipoda is? Nikitu ingine safi sana, inawekaka rangi kwa hizo vitu. Niulize nirejulia wapi hiyo. Ni kwa sababu nimekua hapa. I've been in this country for long. And I think Paul, thinking about the whole thing, writes the first Thessalonians, and immediately he writes another one. Because he's trying to help the church understand something. That I think if you and I understand, our life will never be the same again. So Paul wants to address, the, and I'm looking at the second Thessalonians, chapter number one. Starting with verse number three. And I will read. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren. As it is fitting. Because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you abounds towards each other. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patient and faith 
in all of your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with the tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with the power. Verse number 12. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father, if you can speak to us, speak in a language we can understand. In the season of the time that we find ourselves in. For dear Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Apostle Paul quickly, quickly pinned another letter to the Thessalonians. He is writing to infuse in them hope. So that it can help them understand the purpose of pressure. Because pressure will come. And if you can grasp and get a hold of some of the lessons that we can find in that passage that we have read. Then we can discover ways in the midst of pressure to find hope. Beyond that, we might just see that pressure can also motivate us to hold on to hope in ways we have never Considered. That's what Paul is trying to address. Hope in the midst of the pressure that there is. Hope in the midst of the pressure that there is. You see, a story is given of a man that uh, he found himself in pasture and there was a bull that was charging against him. wale watu wa huko bullfighters yani bull inakasirika mpaka inatoa moshi ni moshi ama ni nini yani kwa hasira inafanya hivi na kuarusa kila kitu kiko karibu so this man was chased by a big bull and it was going to get a hold of him with its horns and the man knew his only safety was a tree that was far and there was a branch that was 10 feet above him and he knew he shifted ni hiyo he ran so fast towards that tree and jumped but he missed the branch on his way up but when he was coming down he got hold of it pressure pressure Motivation then makes all the difference. When the pressure of life is on, then you are motivated more than any other time. Hope surges out that something good is going to happen. The good news that you and I ought always to carry when things are like this is that Jesus is risen. There is hope. So in those 12 verses in Paul's letter, all those nine verses in Paul's letter, we can learn volumes about how hope bubbles up in the pressure cooker of life because there is pressure. You know, when I was thinking about this, what came into my mind is that it affects everyone, but to different degrees. Isn't it? But it affects everyone. My only concern, and please you can help me, sort me out, 
is that the people who suffer more are the people who live in the ghettos. I don't know whether you know that. When I pima to mafuta na kijiko, ukipima iyo kijiko mingi, they pay more than you when you buy mafuta hapa kwa. That is the only thing that bothers me. That It just bothers me. So you need to be a bishop who is bothered. So then, to carry out who are bothered, I'm not going to be able to do it. We have to think about them. But, but Paul is saying, or picking the ghettos in some positive way is that they have learned to survive. They don't store. They eat fresh. They have no fridges. What they cook, they clear. The pressure is on. So when they cook, they clear. But there are sometimes they don't cook for nothing. They don't cook nothing. They survive maybe in one meal. So Paul is trying to put, to help the church to know that there are some things that can only work well. Or your hope can only be hope when you're going through some times that are challenging to you. Challenging to you. But before we look at the two or three points, I think it is good for us to to look at the entrance. How do we enter? How do we get to those points that Paul is talking about? If you're a driver and you're getting from Ruisambo you want to get to the superhighway, there is a kalein that can make what happen. Ukita kwa to kwenda line ya musho, number ine, hako ndiko kwanza unaingilia. Ili uwe nde ndiko kakata kusaidia kuingia uko kuingine. And I think it is also good for us to know, before we get those points that can help us, I think it's good for us to pick one or two things that I think are critical for our entrance to understand what Paul is talking about. If you can put to me verse 8 and 9, verse 8 and 9, see how we can get into it. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse number 9, this shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from his majesty. We are talking about hope and pressure, but you see, for you to enter there, you should understand who God is. There are some things that God will not negotiate. Oh, yeah, pressure is, but God will not negotiate with the sin. There is destruction for those that don't trust in God. Those that don't live for him. Those that keep on pretending they love him. But those are the people that if you put your phone in the wrong place, my brother, my sister, you'll miss it. Can you check whether you have your phone? Or look at your neighbor. Neighbor, thank you. I still have my phone. But it is good for us to know that as we enter to understand that there is hope, even when pressure is building up, there are some things that are non-negotiable. There are some consequences that are non-negotiable. In other words, there are eternal consequences that occur when we re reject Jesus Christ. Remember I said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. When you reject him, there is consequence for you. Oh, Bishop, preach it. I wish that I could erase that from the Bible. I wish I could accept that everyone is getting better. The universalism, which teaches that all will be saved. But I cannot. And no one can. You cannot tamper with truth. The truth is that without him, we are lost and damned forever. Oh, I hope somebody can understand that. Just play with it. 
Yeah, you just play with it. And you know some of us, when I say magadha ambikubwa, hata iyo ndogo. Even that small one. Hey, bishop. Si uhubiri. Bas, wacha ni uhubiri. You cannot tamper with the truth. The truth is, without him, we are lost and doomed. And Jesus was very clear when speaking of heaven. He was not just as clear when he spoke about heaven. He was also as clear as he talked about hell. Iko. Moto. Iko. Bingu. Uamini usiamini. Ipo. Na utabadilisha kitu ni ukweli. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. There are many today who think they can go to heaven. They want to ignore the existence of hell. Yet Jesus was speaking the truth. The only way to heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as the, as the Savior. He is the original hope. That is the first entrance. Before we talk about hope, the first entrance is to know there are some non-negotiable. Tell your neighbor, non-negotiable. Mm. Bingu ni wewe. Utamua mwenyewe. You know, I am amazed. If Pope can say it, and for a long time we believed the the Catholics were safer because there was a place they would put their people called purgatory after they die. And then whether you're a smoker there, you are a whatever you are doing down here, a thief, a murderer, they will pray for you and something would happen there. Kamlango kengine ungeza funguliwa wingie bingune. Just the other day, I can say, Hakuna, I did, I did discover Hakuna. But that one we discovered a long time ago, there is no way. You cannot change when you're dead. You cannot change when you're alive. You cannot change when you're dead. You can only change when you're hearing me. But I used to ask you. Yesterday I was telling some people where I had gone to a funeral. Is that you know when we go to the funeral, we don't talk, it is not for the dead. Because the dead cannot hear it. It's for us. To remind ourselves there is a heaven, there is a place, and all of us will die one day. And we'll be left to tawachwa kwa shamba. You know. Nilikuja nikifikiria hivyo hata kama tulikuwa na alis. Ati kuna shiku, ata niwacha kwa shamba. Hai. Nimekua nikilala kwa nyumba. Lakini kuna siku. We. Nitawachwa kwa shamba. Na nifunikwe na blanketi. Fiti sita. Yani joto ya mirele. I thought. So, as I thought about preaching to us today, I said, then, there are some things that are non-negotiable. There is a heaven. I have to make my commitment now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I know, tunatakaga hile gospo ya kupemberezwa. Sasa hakuna kupemberezwa. We are under pressure. We have to let you know that I cannot be under this pressure here and then miss heaven for whatever sake. Apana, nikose hi. Bas, na mimi nitatembea katika inchi ambayo imejaa dhahabu. Yambayo sita kuwa na shida, ninazikanyanga. Oh my goodness, have you ever thought about it? Kathahabu kengena tunaweka kwa mkono. Ukiwa na bahati kawe 14 karat ama 18, utakuwa unaringaringia watu. Karibu wafanya fanya hivi. Eh? Na ni, then you think up in heaven, walking on the streets of gold, not for, not, apana 14 karat. Ni gold kilo kadhazi mewekwa kwa flow. May that happen to all of us. I want to see all of us walking on the streets of gold. The second entrance, because I, I want to talk about pressure. The second entrance, verse number three. And verse number 11. Can you put verse three? We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting. Because your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you abounds towards each other. Verse number 11. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Both of these verses remind us of the entrance. And I will call this priority of prayer. And there is no way 
I want to talk to you. Don't expect things just to happen. Push in prayer. Prayer meeting on Monday. Well, those that come, the Lord bless you. We don't want to preach to the choir. Just come and keep on pushing. One of these days, they will know there is a difference. The priority, the priority, priority of prayer. And it is repeated about now and again. The Apostle Paul, he often reminded people of their need to pray. He made prayer a priority in his life as well. Pray, 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 pray. There was an old preacher who was sharing with his friend and he told his friend, you know, nowadays I don't preach like I used to preach, you know, when I was young. Then he was asked by his friend, why don't you preach the way you used to preach? He said, because the people that used to pray for me are dead. In other words, he acknowledged that the grace of God and the power of God that worked in his life is because there were people that were praying for him. I normally tell pastors when they were Mediterranean, but me, I found myself not ready yesterday. And I was picked by a canon of an Anglican church where I had sat. Said Bishop Wesika Apakuja. So I was brought in front. Dagakidogo, Naruro Boro, Nerua, Weta Mohujia. Mohujia, is who? Is me. Then I wondered, praise God. And I remembered when we used to be gorillas. Gorillas for Christ, we used to sing a song and the preacher would not know who the preacher would be. And the one singing would say, now let's pray for the preacher. You would hear you are the preacher in the prayer. And uh, the, so this, this happens. Huh? So I stood up. Thank God that always be ready in season and out of season. But the point I'm bringing is that I had a people who knew me then, who prayed for me then, who we were friends for many years. I called them as I worshipped him. I said, Hebunita worshipped him. Hapa sasa kwanza iri tu chape neno. Na wato walikuwa na mvi, ispokuwa wale walikuwa mepakarangi ya kiwi. Na wengine wanaenda pole pole. Hawana haraka. Tukagosha, tukagosha. Nikapata neno. Unajua kegosho kinaretaka neno. Nikapata, but nikawambia wakai chini. Nikaubiri. The point that I'm, I'm bringing is, it is true. When you have people that are praying for you. When you have people that, actually they saw me picked. So they knew I wasn't ready. I was not in the program. I'm not an, an Anglican priest. But the canon picked me. We had met somewhere with him, with her, somewhere. When we were burying Kiroko's mom. So she saw me, but I was hiding some. You know, normally, we were see you na umekuta ibada. Ka pale, ni maandiko. Hili utolewe pale, basi uletu ya pale. Lakini za nilitolewe pale, nikapewa kazi, na kikaka, omba, ninaomba. Tulikuwa sisi wabili tunacheza mpira. Ninampigia, na nipigia, na mpigia, tukafanya kazi mzuri. Huyu mubiri, hapa, huyu mze. Ali muambia mwenzake, maombi. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. Mwambie jirani yako maombi. It is important because prayer support. It is power. Even as we think about next Sunday, what will be different is prayer. Let's keep on pushing. Oh my goodness. What a pressure. Pressure hiyo tuweke kwa mungu na tuombe. Prayer is a privilege we need to take seriously. Because hope is easier to find when we make communication with the Father a priority. I want to say that again. A hope is easier to find when you make communication with the Father a priority. Are you looking for hope? If you are looking for hope, it will be easier if you are communicating with God about your life and about what is there for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now that is the entry. One or two, three points and I will get out of your way. There is power under pressure or power under pressure produces hope. Power. There is power. And power under pressure produces hope. In verse 3 and 4 we read, We ought always to thank God for you, brothers. And rightly so, because your faith is growing. 
more and more. And the love, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all persecution and trials you are enduring. Now, Paul is writing and he's saying there are some points here which are very interesting. He's saying, he reminds them, your faith is growing. Your love is increasing. And you're standing tough as you face whatever is happening in the land. And I want to speak to Kenyans. When I look at to you, I want to declare some of you, your faith has been growing. Even as every day you wake up from your house and know the economy is hard, your faith is growing. You know there is some better days that are coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your love for each other. Tunatoa tu. Hey. Wanakufa tunatoa tu. Hallelujah. Hey. Hii chachi ni poa sana. Si tunatoa. Hey, salimia jirani yako. Na kama anasweti umuache. Ujipanguze hiyo sweti yake. Because you see, the thing is, even with the current situation, God is still God. I love him. I love him. He says, not only that, your love is increasing. May the love of God continue increasing in us. If, you know, and you are standing tough. Stand tough. Let's face whatever is happening to, together. If someone were to ask you, if you wanted to be described as a person who is growing, stronger in faith, loving others, what would you say? Certainly, I want to be in that number. Growing in faith, becoming stronger and tough in the seasons that I find myself in. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. They said we will get finished by COVID and COVID came and COVID disappeared. Hallelujah. Yeah. There is power under pressure which produces hope. It is not happening in good times. It is happening in the pressure cooker when there are problems. He said you are under persecution, but your faith is growing. Economy is tough, but your faith is growing. Economy is difficult, but your love for each other is growing. I love God. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Do you have a tomorrow? You will face it. Because Jesus is alive. Sometimes we make great discoveries about God when we are not expecting to do so. When we are under pressure, we are able to see the way God provides and cares for us and that brings hope. You know when there are problems, when there are people are being laid out to the left, right and center, when you see C you still working and earning, you see God and you can identify how God is working in those times when pressure is on. You see, it is when there is no pressure, then you live like everything is leisure. Pressure. We are able to see how God works and that brings hope. God does some of his greatest work in when there is some challenge or when we are under some pressure. Never forget the following. It takes broken soil to produce a crop. Don't forget that. Don't forget it takes broken clouds to give rain. Please don't forget that. Don't forget it takes broken grain to give you bread. Don't forget that. It takes broken bread of our Lord Jesus Christ to give us strength. Don't forget that. Sahau mambu igine rakini usi sahau kwamba lazima kue na kuvunjika. Lazima kue na kuvunjika. So in the midst of turbulent times, we find power that we never knew we could have. That power awakens within us awareness that we are not alone. Yani sisi tuko na Yesu na tutashinda. Am I talking to people that have Jesus? What about tutashinda? May the Lord help us. But the second thing that you need to know that is that process of pressure, process, produces hope. It is not only the power under pressure, but even the process. You know, some of us have a tendency 
of not enjoying life. Watu wengine hatujui ku enjoy life. Watu wengine ni boring kidogo. Mkiwa nao wanakubo sana. But there are some people if you go with them actually you think you think what is wrong with this person? Kuna mzungu mmoja utotembelea hapa. Huyo mkienda naye lazima uwe tayari kusimama kila mahali. Akiona ndege anataka kutoka apige picha. Akiona mlima anataka kusimama apige picha. Akiona jua vile linapitia kwa miti anataka kusimama apige picha. He enjoys everything. Valleys and everything. Some of us pass through Naivasha. Huko juu and nothing. Nothing. Even feeling nothing. We don't you know. Oh man. I want people who can enjoy <laughs> enjoy life. And this although I had not warned Alice, we went to Boy, Boise, Boise. And we climbed up the mountain and there was some snow. And you hey. See Alice will enjoy your snow. So me because only when me yona kitambo. Nashindwa what is the problem with this lady? But she enjoyed it. Naye mzungu nilikuwa naye rafiki yangu tulisoma naye miaka 50 huko anachukua balls of snow kumchapa Alice nayo ama kumuonesha Alice vile ata and they really enjoyed mpaka nika tukapigwa kapicha kwa hiyo snow nikasambaza kwa watu wengi ili waone watu maisha and you know enjoying life kwa sababu haina rehearsal did you enjoy life when you're coming to church this morning you know coming like you know, you know it's siku kuzukumwa I'm going to church. I came here myself at 5 something because I'm so excited about church. 5. Enjoy life. Enjoy the process. Verse 5 says, "All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering." other translation reads something like this to make you worthy of the kingdom of god and this is beautiful anything that is important in life is worthy the effort and they Im- <laughs> my goodness anything 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 that is important in life is worthy the effort and the important things usually take a lot of effort but my attitude so he's trying to encourage the brothers they are suffering but because jesus lives i pray for you that you'll be counted worth my prayer for this church for this service is that none of us because of the pressure around us will cause us to miss the goal will not change the goal post will still be faithful to god what he promised he will bring it to pass god you're awesome hallelujah you know pressure and i might i might end up very close to now tell your neighbor the bishop might end up very close to now because of that that clock which is very generous a story is told of some fishermen that had real problems as they would transport fish from the east coast to west coast in the us a particular fish that is called cod fish and um, if they they froze them by the time they get on the western coast the flavor is not good now if they transported them life to west coast because of the environment the flavor was not be good But after some years I discovered let's carry them life but let them put put pressure in them they put another fish that is called catfish catfish and codfish are not friends which meant all the trip from east to west the codfish is running for its life so by the time it gets on the west coast it's still fresh it is fighting for survival saying pressure made pressure help me so that i get home fresh worthy the word is worthy may i enjoy the process may i enjoy the process 
May I enjoy the process. God is in the process of making us different, making us better, making us more usable. It doesn't mean that the pressure goes away, but does mean the pressure has a purpose. Hope lives when we begin to understand it. Oh, may God help me. Because this someone is about me. Because I live where? Where do I live? Kenya. Na jazaka mafuta ya wapi? Ya Kenya. Na nunua supermarket za wapi? Ya Kenya. Mananasi na nunua wapi? Kenya. Pale unanunua ndiyo nanunua mboga na nyanya. But I want to tell the Lord even in the process. So that I can enjoy. You know I told you about enjoying. You know. Kwa sababu. Madereva. Kwanza madereva diyo mko na shida kubwa. Dereva kiri ana enjoy ni kuovertake gari zigini. I enjoy scenery. I was telling some people, muna pitana na mtu muna salimiana. Hamjuani, lakini kwa sababu mpita, unataa kumuenjoy. Naya nakuja mbi, wakikupita naya naku, muna elekea, haujui. We unaenda nyahururu, naya naenda kisumu, lakini viruti hapa mumeenda mbio, mbaka unafika pali, unamukosa, unachitua. Amenda wapi? Enjoy life. Enjoy. Let's, the process. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. The process. Let's enjoy the process. Sirikari yako. Eh? Kwa zao sirikari sini mimi. Ama sirikari unafikire ni nani? Sini mimi. Kwa hivyo kama sirikari ni mimi, I will enjoy it. The process. But the process is not right. Is the process right? Am I supporting the process? No, 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 no. But I'm telling God, even in the process, kama hiyo ndiyo, tapitia pale. Sita hama, I will not be a Ugandan. I'm a Kenyan. Proud to be so. Sasa hata nikienda Amerika. Can you think? Professor, sasa nikienda Amerika. Kwezi nita, nita haza hizo kazi kwa huko, wanjiru wanajua hizo kazi, zinakuwa kwa huko, nita weza. Kwaza wanaume wanaendaga huko. Wanaume. Bwana Yesu asifiwe wanaume. Acha nisiwaambie vile mnaendaga huko. Lakini huko wanaume wanaonaga duma na dust na na mambo mingi. But I want to enjoy the process. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow.